All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So in less than 12 hours from now, the Dokkan festival exclusive in Yamcha will be dropping on the global side of the game. So in this video, I want to give you guys a full breakdown of basically everything you need to know about this release from the banner details to the uh, unit details of both the Yamcha and the side unit Yajirobe, the new category called uh, Earth Bread Fighters, and of course the animations as well, to hopefully help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned Dragon Stones to try and pull him. So uh, yeah, with all that said, let's jump right into it, and before we get into the banner or the units, we'll start with the animations. So let me just quickly pause the music here. Okay, full screen this, and enjoy guys. Okay, so there you have it. And uh, like I said, when the unit first uh, released on JP, um, they actually did, I would say, a pretty good job of making Yamcha look pretty badass, you know, considering it's Yamcha. Um, I think they did as well as they could with a Yamcha unit. And uh, yeah, the animations look good. Uh, the reason I was laughing was because it's just so hard to take Yamcha seriously, right? But <laughs> yeah, the animations are are solid. And uh, honestly, between the two characters, I mean, of course, Yamcha is better, but for the animations alone, uh, I kind of want the Yajirobe a little bit more because I, I love this guy's animations, man. And he's also an amazing unit on top of that. So uh, of course, we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, let's move on to the uh, banner, and of course, I'll give it a rating out of 10 as well, based on uh, how much value I feel like this banner provides to you. So, going into the featured pool, uh, this was the banner that dropped on JP a few months ago, and by all means, I do feel like the global banner will be identical. So, we have the uh, new Yamcha and Yajirobe, and then there's the Int, Resurrection F, Blue Goku and Vegeta, the AGL Transforming Trunks, AGL Captain Ginyu, Fizz Transforming Frieza, and also the AGL Transforming Goku. So as a whole, uh, the featured pool is looking okay. Okay, I would say it's a pretty average um, Dokkan Fest banner with like some very good units and then some not so exciting Dokkan Fest units. So the highlights here, obviously, outside of the new characters, are the Blue Goku and Vegeta, and the uh, Captain Ginyu. These two are still very, very good Dokkan Fest units. Uh, the Trunks, I feel like, is maybe slightly below, like a tier below these two, like the Ginyu and Goku, but still very solid. And then a little bit below that, we have the Fizz Frieza, who is not as good as he used to be, obviously, because of the power creep. And then the uh, AGL Goku is around the same level in my opinion, like none of these guys are bad, don't get me wrong, none of them are bad units, it's just there's different levels, right? So I would say if you're not pulling the Yamcha or the Ajirobe, then you definitely at least want the Goku or the Ginyu, and uh, the other guys are not bad either, but uh, as a whole this banner, like I said, is pretty average, so it gets like a 
7 out of 10 for me. Now let's move on to the Yamcha himself. Uh, starting with his leader skill, it's Earth Red Fighters, which is the new category or Saiyan Saga category. He plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 170%, plus an additional HP attack and defense plus 30% for characters who also belong to the Earthlings or Turtle School categories. So this new category right here, Earth Red Fighters, is absolutely massive. Now, I don't think it's as big as Pure Saiyans, but it's got to be like top three maybe top five at worst biggest categories in the entire game with just like how many units are in it so the description on the dohan wiki is consists of characters that were raised on earth makes sense now i'm not gonna obviously highlight every single character or every single unit in the category but you guys can take a quick look here we got uh quite a few lrs to start and then moving on to the TURs, uh, there's just a bunch, guys. I mean, there's got to be well over 100 units in this category. I didn't count. I don't think there's like a total anywhere on this page, but easily over 100, probably 150 to 200. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. The point is, man, there are so many units in this category, it's got to be top five. It, it, it's got to be top five. So yeah, the great thing about Yamcha's leader skill is that you will have many options for uh, team building purposes, right? So that is the Earthbred Fighters category. And moving on to his super attack, raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And passive is activate the entrance animation once only and key plus two and attack and defense plus 150% for four turns from start of turn when there are another five or more earth bred fighters category allies on the team at the start of characters attacking turn. Key plus two attack and defense plus 150% plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% with each attack performed up to 100%. And 50% and then medium chance of performing a critical hit, high chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, launches an additional attack that is a high chance of becoming a super attack, launches another additional attack that is a high chance of becoming a super attack within the same turn after evading an attack, and then plus an additional uh, chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus 10% within the same turn with each super attack performed. His active skill causes ultimate damage and uh, within the turn activated, attacks are guaranteed to hit and the conditions are can be activated after the character evades four or more enemy attacks, including super attacks in battle or when all allies attacking on the same turn are earth bred fighters category characters once only. So for the second part of this condition, uh, you can basically in theory, use this active skill on turn one if you have a mostly Earth Red Fighters team, right? So that's pretty awesome. And his links are Total School, Solid Support, In Fighters, E Fighters, uh, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Worthy Rivals, Kamehameha, Earthlings, Turtle School, Saiyan Saga, and Earth Red Fighters. Now we do have some additional calculations here. Uh, his additional boost with each attack performed is calculated separately for a total boost of attack and defense plus 900% or attack and defense plus 525% starting from the fifth turn, starting from the turn in which the character performs the fourth attack in battle. So basically early on in the fight, in the event, uh, he can get a massive, massive attack and defense boost. Now after turn four, he does lose a big chunk of that, so it'll go down to 525%, which is still good, but obviously not as good, right? But um, as a whole, this character is very, very strong, guys. It's a really impressive uh, unit, in my opinion. He kind of reminds me of uh, the AGL Ginyu, actually, in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously, they're not the exact same unit, but... They're both fantastic, and they're both a little bit limited by the conditions in their uh, kits, whether it be from the passive or active skill, that make it so you really want to run them on their main categories, right? Because 
Uh, if you don't, then you won't be getting the full benefit or getting the full boosts. Um, in this case, it's Earth Red Fighters for uh, Ginyu. It's, of course, Ginyu Force. Now, with that said, uh, Yamja is definitely less limited because Earth Red Fighters is such a massive category compared to uh, Ginyu Force. So, um, it's not as big of an issue for this unit compared to the Ginyu. And uh, even if you don't run him on Earth Red Fighters, he can still be really good, it's just he is optimal on the Earth Red Fighters team, uh, especially being the leader, of course. So um, overall, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it's not a perfect unit by any means, but he is just really, really strong. He's going to hit super hard, he's got the 50% chance to dodge, uh, he's going to be getting a lot of defense, um, his defense is not amazing by any means, he's not going to be getting like a million defense or anything like that, but I think his defense paired up with the dodge chance make him a uh, at least reasonably good defensive unit. And um, yeah, he's just really good. <laughs> That's basically all there is to say about the Yamcha. Now, before we go, let's briefly go over the details for the Yajirobi as well, who, as I've said, is awesome in his own right. So. His leader skill is Earth Bread Fighters keep plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 130%. Super attack massively raises defense for one turn, causes supreme damage, and seals super attack. And passive is keep plus 3, attack and defense plus 150%. All allies keep plus 1, and attack and defense plus 30%. Self excluded, so he's not getting this boost. Plus an additional keep plus 1, and attack and defense plus 20%. For all allies, self excluded for 3 turns plus an additional defense plus 120% when the character is the third to obtain uh, key spheres in a turn, plus an additional attack plus 150% and great chance of performing a critical hit when performing a super attack as the third attacker in a turn. Great chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, within the same turn after receiving an attack as the third attacker in a turn, and then survives KO attacks up to uh, once within a turn and recovers 10% HP at the end of the turn. So this dude is just like the ultimate slot 3 unit and based on all of the conditions in his passive that require him to be in the third slot, he was obviously designed for that purpose. Um, and he is just awesome, man. He's such an insane support unit providing up to key plus 2, attack and defense plus 50%. For all allies, he's uh, able to survive a KO attack, he's recovering HP at the end of the turn. Um, and also, I forgot his active skill, which fully recovers HP and removes all allies' negative effects, which is essentially the effect of a Senzu Bean support item, right? And uh, to activate this, uh, you need to be uh, below 40% HP with another Earth Bread Fighters category ally attacking in the same turn, starting from the 5th turn from the start of battle once only. So he provides a full heal, basically just an extra Senzu Bean support item uh, late in events when you might really need it, right? And uh, this is, I mean, he is just everything I want from a uh, banner unit, just a unit that provides all the support you could possibly want, right? So uh, yeah, just great great unit um i really want this yajirobi honestly maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit more than the yamcha although i wouldn't mind the yamcha as well so uh yeah that's yajirobi uh links are kind of you know not good uh flea more than me is the eye coward solid support in fighter toughest nails and fierce battle definitely some wonky links in there but is to be expected, and categories are Earthling, Saviors, Saiyan Saga, and Earthbred Fighters. So that is the Yajirobi, just love this unit, and uh, also really, really impressed by the Yamcha as well. So as a whole, I would say um, this release is, I mean, surprisingly, surprisingly good, <laughs> surprisingly good. I mean, you might not expect a new Yamcha and Yajirobi to be worth summoning for at all, but I will say, you know, regardless of the character, just from a performance perspective, 
uh, they're up there with some of the better units in the game, you know? So uh, that is basically everything that you guys need to know about this release. That's all the information I can provide to you. And hopefully at this point, you guys have enough info to make an informed decision for yourselves about whether you want to summon for Yamcha and Yajirobe, or if you'd rather save those stones for something else in the future. But if you guys want my opinion, um, of course, it depends on how badly you actually want these units, right? Uh, if you do really want Yamcha or Yajirobe, keep in mind, of course, Yajirobe is going to be more readily available on every banner um, after this one. So he's not as big of a priority to go for right now. But Yamcha could take a while to return. So if you really want Yamcha right now, I don't think it's a terrible idea to summon, right? I don't think you should feel bad about doing a couple of multis, but I definitely wouldn't go too hard on this banner, like most Dokkan Fest banners. It's about average, so it's not bad value, it's not great value. Um, but yeah, I would say a couple multis, maybe three to four, if you're really feeling the Yamcha, and... Uh, keep saving from there because we do have golden week around the corner and uh, a little bit further in the future you know in about like four months or so we have the anniversary as well for global so um actually no it's more like three months yeah more like three months from now you have the anniversary on global so uh you definitely want to have the stones ready for that you definitely want to have as many stones as possible for the eighth anniversary banners so yeah um Regardless of how you feel about the Amtra, I wouldn't spend too many stones. I wouldn't do more than like maybe four or five multis at most. But uh, if you don't want the Yamcha that bad, then it's probably an easy skip for you. But uh, yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys plan to do with the Yamcha banner. Are you going to be summoning? Are you going to be skipping? And if you're going to be summoning, then how many stones do you plan to spend? Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.